Hi, I'm Karen from Langate Farm, and today I'm going to teach you how to needle felt little swans. Today we're going to needle felt swans, and we're going to make a white one, but I will show you what you need if you want to make a black swan. So the white swan, this swan has an armature, a little orange beak, and lots of fluffy locks. So first, let's go, let's do this first. First, you'll need a piece of 16 gauge armature wire. And you want it to be 12 and three quarter inches long. A little bit longer than your ruler. And then you will need some white core wool, as wide as you can get it. Um, if you have white with any kind of sparkle in it, it's really good for making the head. Then you need curly locks to make those feathers. Gonna need a little bit of orange for a beak, very little. You need a little black for the background of the beak. And then just odd items that you'll need. You'll need a fine point Sharpie. Um, you'll need some kind of glue, but this is only if you're gonna put on some little crowns. You wanna stick them on their head. A little pair of scissors. Um, if you want to add blush to their cheeks, you can have a little blush, a little ribbon for their neck. One other item I like to use is called Tacky Wrap. You get this from Serafina Fiber Art. Um, this will help the, the fiber stick to your wire. So let's get started. I'm going to put this aside. Let me get organized. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is bend. We're going for an armature that looks kind of like a swan. With this little wire. We're gonna take our 12 and 3 quarter inch wire. You're gonna measure two inches, approximately two inches. And this becomes the head. I kind of just bend it around my finger. Then you're gonna measure three inches. That will become the neck. From there, you're gonna make a bend and you're gonna curve the rest of the wire around for its body. This is a pretty basic armature. I just bend a little teeny piece around the neck so it doesn't end up poking out. So there we have our wire. So now we're gonna start wrapping. Let me take these out of here. Okay. So what you need is a piece of core wool. This is kind of thick core wool. White, I'm gonna split it down the middle. So that's a little bit easier to work with. I'm gonna draft it out a little bit. Whenever you're pulling your fibers out, it's called drafting. And we're going to wrap this body it's not super precise. I tend to go in a figure eight motion. Wrapping it pretty tight. I ended right there. We're going to just tack that in so we can wrap another piece. One more, the second piece that I tore in half. We're going to wrap it around. It's giving us a nice flat base for the swan. And we'll tack that in. I'm gonna try and make this pretty flat down here. But we can work on it more later. Because we wanna make sure he sits. He or she. I'm gonna get another piece of white. Probably another eight inch piece and I'm going to tear a piece off. Now I'm going to go up the head. So using the tacky wrap, you're going to smear it on your wire. If you don't have tacky wrap, it's it works pretty well, but it just makes it so much easier. And we're going to wrap nice and tight, keeping that roving flat as we go up the neck and see how well it's sticking 
to the neck. And we're gonna wrap around the head. Now swans have pretty flat heads, believe it or not. It's really good to look at some reference pictures before you start. Let's go, let's tack this in a little bit. Careful of that wire that's in there. They also have pretty skinny necks, so it's up to you on how fat you want to make the neck. Some of mine come out fat, some of them come out skinny. Take that on. Let's get this out of here. Tear off another little skinny piece. Start at the base again. The goal here is to get the neck all nice and even. You don't want a swan with a lumpy neck. Wrap it around the head. Let's finish it off. Careful you don't stab yourself in the finger. Keep this nice and smooth. We're going to add a little bit of sparkle to ours in a minute. You can see how I don't, he's not smooth all the way down, so let's even that out. Sometimes you'll notice you didn't wrap as tight as you thought if you're going the other way. Good rule of thumb is to try and wrap always in the same direction. So this will become our swan's head. Got a little bend there. So now, build up his body. Take your core wool. Now you can use a nice fat piece. And I wrap it I make it like a little log. Just tuck it in here. And tack it there. Let's tack it on this side. see his body starting to take shape. Now you're going to take this other little piece that you had sitting there, tie it all together. So we're going to take a little piece and as you start to felt this all together, I want you to think about a swan shape. We're, we're, we're working towards a tail here, so you're, you want to get a pointed tail. And then we're going to add a little piece. We're going to take two little bundles of white. We're kind of going to draw a triangle. Flip it in. Get a nice little triangle here. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to add it in. Leave it a little floofy right there. We're gonna take this, you don't even worry about 
felting on that side. And we're gonna just add it right here because it will be covered with uh, locks. So you won't even see it. Just wanna get it nice and attached though. Careful around your fingers so you don't poke yourself. Now to tie that all in, we're just going to add a little piece over the top. When you're learning to needle felt, the main thing you're learning is how this needle pushes wool. You can see I'm felting at an angle, going straight in, straight out, so I don't break my needle. But it's pushing it towards this pointed cone shape. Want it, but you want it a little bit round on top, like a bird. All tucked in here. And then our basic swan shape is here. So let's put a little bit of sparkle on its head. I'm going to take just a very little bit of this sparkly white fiber. I'm going to wrap. So I don't want his head and his neck to get much bigger. But I want to add a little bit of sparkle. Because everybody likes glitter. the rest of his neck. You can see it also helps smooth out the neck to add this little bit of white sparkly merino stellina mix. set him aside and we're going to make some wings. We're going to need probably a three inch piece like that. Actually, we're going to do it different. I'm going to do it a different way. I want you to take two pieces, take your ruler. This is an easier way. And wrap about a two inch pillow. Slide it off. And we're gonna wrap another two inch pillow. Slide it off. These will become the wings. You're going to tuck in this one end that came off the ruler. Now remember your wings, you want them to kind of look the same. But one is, this is the base of one. And it doesn't matter if it's super even because we're going to cover it. And then this side, because they mirror image each other, is the base of the other one. I'm just trying to work them into the a similar shape. Let's tuck this in round it out and then we're going to stab it. All 
Remember to turn them over. Remember, if you stab for too long on your felting pad, it will become one with your pad. You don't want to do that. So we have two little wings starting to take shape here. needs tucked in a little bit more. Whenever you're felting towards your hand, again, be very careful you don't poke yourself. So now we're gonna attach these to our little swan. And I know he doesn't look like much yet, but he will. And I really only attach them right here at the front. And before we, we're gonna start working on, I'll put this on first. And see, this looks really messy, but we're gonna get that cleaned up. Make sure they're kind of in the same place, you know? Because if he was a bird, he would need to fly. Now, since we put the sparkle on the head, I am going to take a little bit more sparkle make a little pillow. I am going to attach it right here across the breast of the bird. Start to form, let it blend into the wings. Start to meld everything together here. Then you're going to take your little curly locks. These are different than the ones I used in the sheep. They're a little fluffier. You're going to take them and just start to attach them like a wing. I like them to hang off and be super fluffy which means I'm not going to felt them in very tightly. I am, I am angling them from front to back. So it'll look like feathers. I'm gonna save that bunch for the tail. After you make a couple of these, you learn which locks work best where. So we have this big bunch of wings right there. 
Let's go to the other side. There's a little bit of blue in there. I don't think we want a blue swan. How much feathers you add to their wings is subjective. If you want a super fluffy swan, add a super fluffy amount. You know, and technically, you don't really even need to make the wing portion out of the white. I just like that it gives a little fullness to your swan here and there. Now, that little piece that I saved for the tail, I'm gonna take back here and fluff on right there. Be careful not to poke yourself. And then again, since we use a little bit of sparkly white in the front, we're going to use a little bit of sparkly white in the back. Tie this all together. Sometimes I like to put the tail on before the wings. Sometimes I put it on like this after the wings just remember you're always working this part nice and flat just gonna sit nice and flat Next, we're going to work on the beak. Now, white swans have a black face with a orange beak. Black swans have a red beak. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this black merino. It really isn't a good way to tell you how to do this. We're going to make we're gonna make him into a bandit first. Find the center of the head. Kind of poke all the way through so you have an idea where you're going. And then working from the top, you're gonna to take a piece and go across. This is a little finicky. Keep all those little black fibers in check. We're going to make kind of a diamond shape. But you can see I'm, I'm trying to work even from one side to the other. We're going to go down about that far. Remember, this isn't a speedy thing. And we want this to be even on this side. And there may be too much fiber here, but we'll see.
or building where his beak is going to live. I need to work all these little black fibers in. Basically, you have a triangle on one side of his head, and then this triangle is not as pronounced, so I'm gonna drag those fibers. Remember, they don't have round heads. Their heads are flat. Kinda weird. like to make sure that's nice and smooth. Now, let's add a beak. I'm gonna take some orange. This is Marigold Corydale. And the amount of fiber you need here, again, is very small. Probably this much, and a skewer is your best friend. We're gonna make a little seed. So what we're making now is this piece right here. And yes, it does have a black tip. You're gonna take your orange, and you're gonna wrap it. It's about a half an inch. You want it fairly tight. Just use everything that you have there and slide it off. This will become our beak. We're gonna start poking it. Don't rush this step because you don't want a hairy beak. little parts are fussy. Then we're going to take a tiny bit of black fibers and we're going to color the end of this beak. Wrap them around. Let's do the end. I'm using my needle to gather the black fibers. Just make sure they're all tucked in. Always trim off the very hard ones to get out in with scissors later. Now, this is the fun part. Take your scissors and you're going to make a snip right up the middle. And then your beak is going to go right there. Start poking it in here. Now you have a wire in here you have to be careful of and attach it. We're going to use this fiber to go out along here in the same shape as your black. You want to mirror it. 
takes a minute to get this on. And your beak will go all over the place while you're working on it. I'm going to go over here. to hold it between my fingers and then work those fibers in to get it attached. It's okay if your beak shortens up a little. And then we're gonna, now we're gonna add some eyes. You're gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of, of white. Make two little balls your fingers little tiny what we're going for is this right here this little ball for an eyeball eye goes right in the corner of the black and I know you're saying oh my gosh you can't even see it you add that in you're going to take that sharpie unless you want to chance it and do it with a one black fiber i add the pupil with the sharpie they just come out better just tap it in there it's one side and then we'll do the other side And there you have it. We have one white swan. Might do a little bit more poking. Make his neck a little bit more even. If you wanted to make this into an ornament, you would find where it hangs the most level, which is usually right about the next spot right here and run a little ribbon up there. So then if you were going to make him fancy, I have these little tiny crowns. And I like this E6000 glue. I like it better than hot glue. Just put a little bit of glue on the crown, stick it on his head. And we'll add a little bow. Probably not the best bow tire in the world. It 
Sometimes I give them a little bell. Takes a minute for that glue to set. There we go. And we have a little swan joining gold crown. This guy came out a little bit bigger. Now, if you were gonna make a black one, did I show you the black? I did not. If you're gonna make a black one, I use a natural black roving, which is a little bit brown. It's not super black. That way, when you get to your black curly locks, they show up better and they have a little brown tinge in them. And then you do this the same way, except they just have a red beak with a white tip. Okay, now um, that we finished, I'm gonna do a little bit of touch-ups. His nose is a little bit, his nose, his beak is a little uneven. So I'm just wrapping a little bit of orange fiber and I'll poke it in here, make it a little smoother. can hear me hitting the wire. And that was a tiny, tiny bit of fiber that I used. Remember, you can always add, but you can't take away. Smooth this out a little bit. It's kind of cool to make a pink one. Maybe I'll we'll have to make a pink swan. These are great for like a wedding table decoration. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel because that really helps us out. And if you need supplies to make our swans, it's all in the description and the farm store at liongate.org. See you soon.